made a wonderful mother, a mother who never grows old. He made her smile of the sunshine, and he molded her heart of pure gold. In her eyes, he placed bright shining stars. In her cheeks, fair roses you see. God made a wonderful mother, and he gave that dear mother to me. While we honor all our mothers with words of love and praise, while we tell about their goodness and their kind and loving ways, we should also thank a grandma. She's a mother too, you see. For she mothered my dear mother as my mother mothers me. I would like to wish all the mothers happy Mother's Day, especially my mom. Almighty God, today we are grateful. Grateful for your goodness in creating mothers. You gave them eyes to watch over us and ears to listen to our joys and struggles, our laughter and tears. You gave them legs to run to us when we fall and arms to pick us up again, to hold us as we cry or cradle us while we sleep. You gave them hands to wipe away the tears, to brush the hair from our eyes and dirt from our faces, to hold when we're scared or when we want to dance or when we just need a little help. You gave them mouths to kiss away the pain and voices to encourage and comfort, to pray with us and for us. You gave them minds full of ideas and wisdom and hearts full of love. God, on this Mother's Day, bless our mothers. Give them your strength, peace, and love so they may continue to give it away to all those around them. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day, everyone. We pray God's blessing upon you. And uh, normally, if this was in church, we'd be going around. The children would be going around with roses or carnations, whatever flowers that we could get. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that can't happen this year. But we praise God's blessing upon you. And we hope that you'll have that part of your bubble will be that some of your children and your grandchildren will be around you. But we're here this morning to praise the Lord. And we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Val and I are here. And we're here to... Uh, to lift our voice to the Lord and you can sing along with us. The words are there for you to, to sing along with us. And uh, you're in your confines of your home, so sing along. And if anyone gives you an elbow on the side, that means don't sing, but there's no one there with you. So let's sing it together. I lift my voice, hallelujah, in song unto thy name. I lift my voice.
But we're going to sing another chorus that most of you would know. But if you don't, once again, the words are there. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift my hands. Hallelujah. And I lift my voice. I lift my voice to the Lord, singing, I love you, Lord. Do you love the Lord this morning? And if you don't, well, this is a day that you can make that right. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Sing along with us. In moments like these, I sing out a song. In moments like these. She gives so much of herself. She is so very dear. She's a special kind of mother who can brighten any minute because of all the thoughtfulness and kindness she puts in us. She's a special kind of mother who adds so much joy to living. She's always very supportive, very loving, and very giving. Happy Mother's Day. Hey everybody, how are you doing this beautiful Sunday morning? And uh, what's so special about this Sunday morning, Gracie? It's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. That makes it really special for all our mothers because we love them very much, right? And here's one way that's to show our love. This is what we made here. What is this? This is our mother's heart. Well, it's a great big heart, right? Yeah. And this heart represents the love that our mothers have for us, right? Yeah. It's a really big heart. Now, compared to the heart that's in your chest, which one's bigger? Definitely this one. Yeah, definitely that one, right? Now, do you remember that when you were young sometimes, you say you would say to your mom, that I love you this much, right? Mm -hmm. You say this much. Now, what did mom probably say back to you? 
I love you this much. Now I love you this much. Now you put up your arms. Whose arms? Whose arms is bigger? Mom's. Yeah, mom. I mean, I'll, I'll think about the uh, mom's arms is way bigger, right? Because we love you this much. And the same thing with this heart. This mom's heart is bigger than your heart, so she loves you so much more. Even though you love your mom, she just loves you more. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Yeah. And one way we can show. Uh, oh yeah. And what's some ways that mom shows her love to you? Must love you. Give up her bed for you. Like <laughs> Definitely. And we do our makeup together. Makeup. That's mm -hmm. a great way to show that she loves you. And we bake together. Bake. Yeah. Awesome. Cookies. Cookies is always great to show the love. Plus the cakes. Cakes. Cakes are great too. Yeah. Definitely sweet. Just like your mom. Like me. Oh, like you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, but also, who do you think? Is, is it possible that anyone can love you more than your mom? Jesus and God. That's right. You're smart. You got this one figured out already. Uh, yes, Jesus and God loves you more than your mom. It's hard to believe sometimes. It's hard to imagine that someone can love you more than your mom. But we got a little demonstration to show just that. <laughs> when we get to right, and uh, this demonstration that we got to show how much God loves us. I'm going to hold up this heart, just like this, against the wall, and I'm going to shine this flashlight. You see, it shines the flashlight through the heart, and it shows a heart on the wall. Now, Gracie, what does the red heart represent? Our mother's love. And what does the, the shadow heart on the wall represent? That represents God's and Jesus' heart. That's right. That's his love for us. <laughs> so God shines his light through our moms, mm -hmm. and that way shows his love, you know, through our moms, yeah. for you, mm -hmm. right? That's one way of showing his love for us, is through our mothers. Mm -hmm. That's pretty special, I think. I think that's pretty awesome. Yes. Hold that up there. Now, along with that demonstration, goes the Bible verse. And in the Bible verse of John 8 and 12, it says, uh, is that I am the light of the world. That's what Jesus said in John 8 and 12. And that's, that's what we show, the light shining through our moms and to us, right? That's pretty special, I think. Uh, so, we have a little, little I don't know what, before we have to say a little prayer, I have to say, guys, be extra special to your moms today. Mm -hmm. Show them lots of love, lots of hugs, lots of kisses, right? Mm -hmm. If you got cookies made, make sure they eat them all. It's their special day. And uh, I'm sure they'll do it. I'm sure they will. And happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you very much. Love you too, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. And we're going to have a little prayer to end this. Okay? Yes? Uh, dear God, please watch over all of our mothers today. For this is their special day. And they, uh, they mean the world to us, and we know they mean the world to you. Please be uh, show them extra love on this very special day. Amen. Amen. We're going to share together in a time of prayer this morning, and we're going to sing the chorus. And he's ever interceding to the Father for his children. Thank you, Lord. And he's ever interceding to the Father for his own. And in Romans chapter 8. We find this wonderful uh, portion of scripture, verses 26 and 27. And it says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Amen. And how wonderful to know that the Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. And times when we come before Him and we can't put the words together or we don't really know what to pray for, the Father is able to interpret. 
is able to interpret our hearts. And so he intercedes for us. And so we come with boldness into the presence of God today. And wherever you are at this very moment, may you know beyond the shadow of a doubt Amen. that God loves you. Yes. God cares for you. And God desires the very best for you. Thank you, Lord. And if you have needs in your life today, and maybe there are things that seem to be overwhelming, you can bring it to God. He is able to handle anything that comes in our pathway on a daily basis. We're going to sing it together, and then we're going to share in prayer. And we Lord, we pray that you would just guide them and that you would 
just give them strength as they try to meet the responsibilities that are theirs. Lord, as we share this time together, we want that we might lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We want that you will be glorified, that you, Lord, will receive praise. And so, Lord, we pray that you would work and move and have your way. And, Lord, if there's one who needs to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that wherever they are at this very moment, may they realize that they, they, they can call on your name and that, Lord, you will forgive them if they would but reach out in faith to you. Lord, may, may there be that spiritual victory today. And, Lord, continue to guide us in these moments. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to be blessed by the reading of God's Word by Captain Diane Kirby, who's in her own little home nestled down now behind her desk. And we pray God's blessing upon you, Diane. Diane and Randy have been a blessing to us and to the Corps since they retired. But they weren't retired. We put them to work pretty quick. So thank you, Diane. And we pray God's blessing upon the reading of his word just now. A mother's love. There's no love like a mother's. Her heart is filled with care. With Christ as her examples, a savior love she'll share. A mother's love is endless not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all the tears and heartaches and special work they've done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love lies on. Through many generations, God's blessing on each one. Be thankful for our mothers who love with higher love, from power God has given and strength from up above. Happy Mother's Day. If you have your Bible close by and you would like to follow the scripture reading this morning, I am reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. That's Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. And it says, These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel. Be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. May God bless the reading of his word to our hearts this morning. Amen. Thank God for mother's love. There is no love like a mother's love, no stronger bond on earth, like a precious bond that comes from God to a mother when she gives birth. A mother's love is forever strong, never changing for all time. And when her children need her most, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers God bless them, everyone, for all of the tears and heartache and for the special work they've done. When her days on earth are over, a mother's love li lives on through many generations with God blessing on each one. Be thankful for our mothers, for they love with a higher love from the power God has given and the strength, strength from up above. 
Happy Mother's Day! Hello everybody, my name's Hillary. Um, I've been asked by my church to play a little song in light of the current situation. So today I'll be playing This Is Amazing Grace by various artists. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. The hand that rocks the cradle will change the world. A heart that trains the soul will reach the nations. But the spirit that awakens the destiny of another transforms the universe. Do you want to make a difference in the world? Do you want to help make it a better place to live? Influence the life of a child or a young person, and you will be part of that process. I once saw a quote on a camp t-shirt, and it said this, A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was, the sort of house I lived in, or the number of places I have been. But the world may be different because I was important in the life of a child. We don't know the potential that lies hidden within the life of a little child or a young person, but the influence that we have in a young person's life can help determine their belief system, their values and morals, and can help determine the direction their lives will take. The Gaither Vocal Band sings a song that says, tell it to your children and your children's children that Jesus must be Lord of their life. And in Deuteronomy chapter 6, it is saying that we are to teach our children the things of God. We are to tell them of God and all his wonderful things that he has done. 
But the thing is this, we can tell it all we like, but unless we live it, unless we model it in our lives, it won't mean anything to our children. Prior to entering the promised land, God gave the Israelites some wise words of instructions. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. This instruction is twofold. We must love the Lord our God, and we must have his word inscribed on our hearts. God must be our first love. He must be first in our lives. He must take precedence over all other loves. Children need to know that no one and no thing comes before our relationship with God. When we love God with all our heart and soul and with all our strength, then it affects all our relationships. When we love God with all our hearts, it affects how we live our life and how we interact and how we behave in our relationships with others. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the chapter that's known as the love chapter and often used uh, as a reading for weddings, the whole chapter speaks of love. It tells us the things that love is and that love is not. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. You see, when we put God first and he is our first love, then we can love others in a way that is righteous and holy, in a way uh, that demonstrates the love of God. His words and teachings must be part of our own personal experience, our own journey of faith with God. It has to be something that's real and relevant in our own lives before we can ever attempt to convince someone else of its worth and value in their lives. God's word is to be in us, changing us. If we expect our life to impact our children and our grandchildren, then we must be transformed by the word ourselves. You see, nothing can happen through us until it first happens in us. The importance and influence of the word of God should never be underestimated. If we expect to raise godly children, then we have to be godly parents. We can talk eloquently about the scriptures. We can debate theological ideas. We can argue the validity of the word. But you see, this is all just words blowing in the wind unless we have the heart knowledge of a God who loves us and is ultimately involved in the lives of his children. All our knowledge of the scriptures is just useless information unless we have proven in our own lives its relevance and benefit. When we love God completely, we will want to know his word because his word reveals God to us. And as we get to know God's word, we discover that it is vital. It is a living truth which works in our lives even in our modern age of 2020. 
We will discover for ourselves that it is better than any self-help books that we might find on a bookstore shelf. It is God spanning the ages of time, speaking to us, showing us the way, giving us sound words of instruction that will not fail, that will not wear out, that will not decay, that will not change, and that will not go out of style like the latest fad. God says, love me. Have my word inscribed on your heart, and then you will be able to share it with someone else in a meaningful way. God says that we are to begin right where we are in our own family. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. The spiritual foundation in our children's lives is our responsibility as parents. It is our responsibility to see to, the, to it that our children are taught about God and his word. In Deuteronomy 6, verses 23, 20 to 23, it says, In the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, the decrees and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent miraculous signs and wonders, great and terrible, upon Egypt and Pharaoh and his old household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land that he promised on oath to our forefathers. We are to tell our children of God's working in our lives. We are to share with them God's mighty mercy. We are to share with them how God has provided, how he has made a way from spiritual bondage into life. We are to teach our children the ways of God and tell them of his goodness. We need to be ready to bear testimony, to teach and instruct our children and our young people concerning the faithfulness of a loving God. You see, our children don't need to be entertained when it comes to church. They need to be challenged. They need to be encouraged. They need to be established in their faith so that they know for themselves the truths about which we speak. We need to teach our children by lifestyle. Verses 7 and 8 of Deuteronomy 6. Talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you get up. You see, this holds a more significant Thing than just our ability to be able to verbally talk about the things of God, it indicates our ability uh, to make it such a natural part of our lives that in everything that we do, the ways and teachings of God are lived out in our lives. God's word is to be such a part of us that we can set a proper example for our children and our grandchildren. How we act and how we react. How we handle the obstacles that come through everyday living. How we cope when crisis or tragedy comes knocking at our door. How we interact with other people. The way that we treat each other. All of these things are part of the teaching as we live it out every day in the common, ordinary happenings of our lives. God's intention 
as a practical aspect to it. He wants the word to be such a part of our lives that we are literally saturated in it, that his word is so natural that it is part of everything that we do. It is a part of who we are. It is a part of how we live our lives on a daily basis. There's no better investment that we can make than investing our time and energy in the lives of our children, in the lives of young people, and as parents and grandparents and great-grandparents or Sunday school teachers or whatever place of opportunity it is, we can help to guide and shape and mold young lives. It is a scary thought, isn't it? But yet, what a wonderful privilege. You might not even be a parent. You might be a Christian adult, and you might have an opportunity to help guide a young person, to help nurture them in the faith. There might be those who, who need someone who can be a spiritual coach, who needs someone to give them encourage, encouragement and to help them to grow in their faith. We might be able to be a support system uh, to a young person or to little children. May we use every opportunity that we have to help to teach children and young people about the ways of the Lord. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was or the sort of house I lived in or the number of places I have been but the world may be different because I was important in the life of a child. Maybe your children are grown and on their own. Maybe you have grandchildren. Maybe you have great-grandchildren. Well, you still have that sphere of, of influence and that opportunity. And maybe you're just a young mom and a young dad and you're still working through the teaching and the training. Well, trust in God. Seek his direction, and he will lead you and guide you. I'd like to conclude uh, with this little poem. It's entitled, A Parent's Prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, make me a better parent. Teach me to understand my children, to listen patiently to what they have to say, and to answer all their questions quite kindly. Keep me from interrupting them or contradicting them. Make me as courteous to them as I would have them be to me. Forbid that I should ever laugh at their mistakes or resort to shame or ridicule when they displease me. May I never punish them for my selfish satisfaction or to show my power. Let me not tempt my children to lie or steal, and guide me hour by hour that I may demonstrate by all I say and do that honesty produces happiness. Reduce, I pray, the meanness in me. And when I'm out of sorts, help me, O Lord, to hold my tongue. May I ever be mindful that my children are children. And I should not expect of them the judgments of adults. Help me not to rob them of the opportunity to wait on themselves and to make decisions. Bless me with the bigness to grant them all their reasonable requests and the courage to deny them privileges I know will do them harm. Make me fair and just and kind and fit me, O oh Lord, to be loved and respected and imitated by my children. Amen.
We're going to sing a chorus together. And the chorus says, In my life, Lord, be glorified. And if we want to impact people's lives, if we want to make a difference in someone's life, then we have to allow the Lord to work in our lives so that he can work through our lives. And the Course says, in my life, Lord, be glorified today. And then another verse of that Course says, in my home, Lord, be glorified. And then in my church, Lord, be glorified. And I think that that is the order in which it should flow. First, the Lord works in our lives. He works in our family, and then he works in our church. We have to start with ourselves. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. And as we sing this set of chorus together, may we be open to hear what the Lord wants to say to us. And if there are things in our lives that need fixing or changing because they aren't lining up with what God would want, then may we be willing today to say, yes, Lord, I want you to be glorified in my life. I want you to have all there is of me. And I want to be able to impact other lives for you. Yes. And in order for that to happen, then he has to be first in our lives. He has to be in control in our lives. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. In my
And after we sing it, I'm going to ask my husband to uh, lead us in prayer that the Lord would indeed be glorified in our lives today. And if we claim Christ as Savior everywhere we go, we should be representing Jesus. As a matter of fact, we are. But the thing is to be representing him so others will want to know him. That they will see the evidence of Christ in us. And they will be drawn to him. Because they've seen in our lives what God can do. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. And they've been singing, in my life, Lord, be glorified. But Lord, if there's one this morning, dear Lord, that doesn't, still doesn't know you, still, dear Lord, is hesitant, Lord, may this be the morning, Father, that your sweet, sweet spirit would fall afresh upon them. And Father, that they would lift their hands and they will be seen singing, in my life, Lord, be glorified. In my life, Lord, forgive me because I am a sinner. Come into my heart, Lord. Maybe those words, Father, are resounding to those, dear Lord, this morning. But, Father, this morning we also sang in our home, in our church. And, Father, as we sang that, dear Lord, I looked out over the church here this morning and I seen all the empty pews. And, Father, the, the echo, dear Lord, of mine and Velma's voice, dear Lord, just echoes throughout this empty sanctuary. And Lord, my heart has been broken, but Lord, I'm still blessed, dear Lord, to know that the church is more than just border, more than walls. The church is your people. And Lord, during these days, dear Lord, I believe that you are moving in a mighty way that we have never seen before. So Lord, I pray that, Father, that in your church, in our church here in Clarenville, in the Random Island Church, dear Lord, that your sweet, sweet spirit, Father, Father, is moving in a mighty way. And Lord, that through it all, Father, through all of this, dear Lord, turmoil that we're going through, Father, may we hear of the good news reports, dear Lord, that a sinner has come home. May we hear great news, dear Lord, that those that once served you, that Father has got to be cold. May they report that I have changed. And I want to come back to church. I want to come back to the place where, Father, I should be. Lord, may it be so. Lord, we thank you for the moving of your spirit here today. And in the quietness of this empty sanctuary, we know that you're in the midst of it all. So, Lord, we pray just now your blessing, Father, on our continued service just now, upon the chorus that will be sung and the song that will be closing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Is the Lord preparing you this morning? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. It says pure and holy, tried and true. Have you been tried during these days? But have you been true to these days with thanksgiving? Make it personal. I'll be a living, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I just said it in my prayer that this church is empty. But the church is just not made of a mortar and clay and wood and pews and carpet. We are the church. May I be a living sanctuary to those that I 
running from day to day. Let's sing it together. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Lord, prepare me. with your children, your grandchildren. May you live right. May God be seen in what you say and what you do. Let's sing it together. I want to live right that God may use you. Now I'm going to try to put my hands together. It's not a good thing to do when you're leading a song with this system that we got, but I got to do it anyway. And you can do it out there that are listening. I want to live right that God may use me at any time, at anywhere. I want to live Sing along with a video. It says nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for all of you. And once again, for those that don't know the Lord this morning, Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for you, for the likes of me, for the likes of my wife, Val. And I pray this morning that all that has been said and done, that the Holy Spirit has been nudging upon your heart, and that the sweet Spirit of God will fall afresh upon you. We thank you for the privilege that we have of being able to do this. And God is working in a mighty way. And we believe that great things are happening within the, the outskirts of the church, as we said. But let's sing along with that. It's done differently, nothing but the blood. But it's a song that most of you would know. But the words are there. Sing along as we uh, present this video this morning. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs>
this morning with prayer. And uh, may the Lord be with you. May the Lord be your strength. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we've been able to share together in worship this morning. We pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to each person. And Lord, we pray that your love would surround them, that you would give them strength. And Lord, may you keep them in the palm of your hand. Yes. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week.